All right, welcome back, YouTubers. This is In the Northwest Native News. I'm your host, Jeff Ferguson. And I already said I'm your co host, Mark O'Hill. But they want to hear us. Oh, okay. Now I have audio. Oh, okay. Well, Cheskwogs look locked. Good morning, friends. Uh, we're uh, coming to you live in Spokane, Washington. Uh, we're so happy you're here with us this morning. All right. Yes, happy Monday. It's another great day to be Indigenous, and we have a lot to cover today. <laughs> we hope you had a great weekend. We are. Uh, in the beginning of uh, Women's Women's Month. Women's History Month. Yeah, Women's History Month, all sorts of stuff. So uh, we uh, actually are pretty excited about all of this. Uh, Margot, as you know, is a, a feminist, a <laughs> hardcore feminist. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, she is. I am a feminist. I don't, you know, people refer to that term a lot of times in a neg with a negative tone, but I, and I think that it's not, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that they are anti-men or anything. It's just that they believe in the equal rights of women, and I believe in that too. So. All right. Shout out to RBG. RBG. Did the work for a lot of years, so yeah, yeah we think of her today. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, that's <laughs> nice. All right, so we have a lot to cover. Um, I don't know. Did you want to do this first one? You want to sure. get this going? All right. Okay, so uh, just an announcement. The Spokane Indian Housing Authority uh, is announcing their executive uh, director position for their housing. Uh, again, they uh, the salary depends on experience, but it's a, it's a great job. You know, providing housing for our tribal people, that's really exciting. Uh, so check out the Spokane Indian Housing Authority. Um, it's open uh, and uh, let's get somebody hired. Yeah, let's get somebody in there. All right, so we also have this uh, announcement. This Both of these came out of the Rawhide Press. Uh, thanks out there, shout out to Monica. Uh, let's see, the Healing Lodge is hiring. Here is a list of current job openings as well as the job announcements. We would appreciate if you would help us get the word out and share these openings with you, uh, with those you feel may be interested. HR coordinator, wages 20 bucks an hour to $24 an hour. This has been updated to a full-time position. So they have more going on you can check them out uh, we'll leave the links in the comment section below if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them in the the comment section below you can also chime in uh with us um like uh irv here our buddy from the coeur d'alene tribe tribal elder says uh march 7th the new national cova case at forty thousand three hundred and thirty six lower uh Lowest since October 4th. So that's headed in a good direction. Yeah. Thanks for the update on that, Irv. Anyhow. I just wanted to mention, no. you know, the Healing Lodge, Jeff, is an amazing organization. Uh, you know, the, the Healing Lodge of the Seven Nations, it's mm -hmm. really helping our young people. Um, and we need uh, good tribal folks to be mentors for them. Uh, so, you know, really check them out, apply for the jobs. Uh, it's it's a a meaningful and powerful work so check out the healing lodge all right so we better keep moving okay we have a lot of stories to cover and let's see the first one i got here is open call accepting letters of interest this is a two-year award of a hundred thousand dollars the native arts and culture foundation nacf is now accepting letters of interest for the shift transformative change and indigenous arts program shift awards uh, will support artists and community-driven projects responding to social, environmental, and economic justice issues through a native lens. SHIFT is a monetary award totaling $100,000 for two years with $50,000 of the award earmarked for the lead artist or artist collective. Up to 10 projects will be selected to receive SHIFT awards. Open to independent native artists or native artist collectives working in the disciplines of dance, choreography, fiction, poetry, film, video, multidisciplinary arts, music, performance arts, theater, and screenwriting, uh, traditional arts of 2D and 3D visual arts. Eligible letters of interest must include, uh, let's see, both a description of, let's see, uh, both a, a native artist applicant and a partner organization co-applicant. For a full description of the program award eligibility requirements and to apply, uh, visit their website. Uh, the deadline is Tuesday, March 16th, so that's coming up at 5 p.m. We'll leave, again, the link in the comment section below. So 
that's uh, you know a total of uh, well ten awards at a hundred thousand dollars each. That's a million bucks. Wow! Holy cow! If you got a good organization or if you have a good project that you uh, think uh, should be funded, give it a shot, man. You know, a lot of times I found when I got grants is because there was just a handful of people that applied, and uh, you know, if you got something good and it's worth funding, hey, you know, they say uh, if it's shovel ready. Hey. <laughs> No, if it's uh, uh, if it's up and going, it's nice if you have. And then even if you don't, you know, a lot of times I've been able to to roll that same budget or project into another grant, copy and paste it, and go on. So if you just write it all out, shoot for the stars, hit the hundred thousand dollar. Well, even if you only get a fifty thousand dollar award, you're still headed in the right direction. So anyhow, yeah, Very cool. pretty cool. Check that out. Yeah. So Jeff, uh, taking a turn towards the environment. The river was stolen from us, a tribe's battle to retake the Skagit River. So the Upper Skagit Indian Tribe are fighting Seattle to remove the Gorge Dam and return the river to the section uh, uh, the city dewatered. Uh, Scott Schuler uh, doesn't need to see uh, Skagit River to know something's wrong. As he walked along the riverbanks, he could see uh, moss under each step. He could hear the problem. The river should be singing to us right now. It should be free-flowing. Uh, Schuler says that the cold February raindrops silently disappear into this quilted blue jacket. Uh, the riverbed below him, once uh, home to the Washington's greatest rivers, sits eerily quiet and nearly empty of water. Um, so uh, this is, you know, right in the middle of one of the state's uh, famously wet winters. And so the river has been stolen for, from us, uh, you know, to harvest for money. So uh, here's Schuler, a, a member of the Upper Skagit Indian Tribe, has l lived along the Skagit River for, uh, you know, his life. And, and the people there have lived there 8,400 years and consider it sacred. Uh, and then a century ago, Seattle's public utility dammed the river in, in three spots, creating this hydroelectric complex in it that provides 18% of the city's energy. And so along this two-mile stretch near the Canadian border, the entire river has been diverted into hydroelectric tunnel, reducing the, the wide riverbed to a stretch of sleepy pools. So it's a real problem. Um, you know, we have, uh, you know, the Skagit River people in conflict. The tribe wants Seattle to remove the Gorge Dam, uh, the lowest of the three dams, and return the river to the section of the city's dewatered uh, part. And, um, you know, the tribe says Seattle's century of hydroelectric work uh, on the Skagit River, uh, you know, has dropped salmon runs, and it has all these ripple effects. Really, the Skagit is the last American river outside of Alaska, um, still home to five species of wild salmon, although the fish stocks are dwindling. Um, we clearly see that it's uh, under the Endangered, Endangered Species Act um, and nearby resident killer whale population, uh, which depends on the Skagit River's uh, salmon for survival. Uh, and, and, you know, Schuler goes on to say, our people are salmon people, our fishing people, and clearly, um, you know, this hydro power project is just wiping up but here's the good news that the city's federal license under FERC I imagine uh, these of these dams operates uh, expires in 2025 uh, and so in order to obtain renewal we you know we know for relicensing issues the city will have to work with other stakeholders to keep that license yeah yeah so they're going to be in a position to do something about that hopefully um, but now's the time to come to some cooperation. Knowing that FERC license is hanging over their heads, people all of a sudden want to work with tribes. And when we start looking at issues like this, you know, uh, we're, that's coming up real quick, just mm -hmm. in, in like four years. But mm -hmm. uh, I think we're getting a lot of traction in the Northwest as far as salmon restoration. We have Representative Mike Simpson, uh, who's been working in Idaho on the Snake River, and we got a story on that, kind of an update. But we also have... Uh, the Upper Columbia United Tribes, the Northwest Treaty Tribes. We have an uh, um, acknowledgement of what the tire dust is doing to the salmon in Puget Sound. We have uh, restorations on the Columbia Rivers and, you know, the Snake River. And so I think by the time this thing rolls around, I think we'll have enough traction that uh, we, we may be able to fight the, the renewal of that license. Um, many of these uh, salmon runs have dwindled. You know, I know Fawn Sharp was telling us that uh, her... Uh, uh, Quinault River, you know, she's a uh, uh, president of the uh, National Congress of American Indians, but she was also uh, a tribal leader on her own reservation. She was chairwoman 
of the Quinault tribe, and she said that her in her lifetime she had seen the salmon runs dwindle from five million to under five thousand, and that's in a single lifetime. And they were saying that this next year they might even hit as low as three thousand. That's really devastating. Um, we need all of those rivers to be healthy going all up and down the coast. This is just one of them, the Skagit River. But the Skagit also covers a lot of the North Cascades, which has a ton of the you know tributaries that are, are excellent uh, spawning grounds and habitat for the fish. So, And we yeah. also shout out not only the UCUT, but the sister organization, Kritvik. Mm -hmm. uh, they're the other, the, the lower uh, 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 tribes, if you will, um, that also work together to protect the, the salmon in the water. Yeah, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. Um, just we're, we're going to keep things moving along. Uh, we mentioned a little bit about uh, the Snake River. This article, that article came out of The Guardian. This article uh, comes out here. Uh, this one, I think, was in uh, The Oregonian. That's right. Oregonian tells us, The stars are aligned. Representative Mike Simpson breaks down uh, plan to breach Snake River dams. In Washington, when Idaho Representative Mike Simpson... Uh, publicly called for breaching four lower Snake River dams on Sunday, February 7th, as part of his energy and salmon concept, public relations, uh, it's fair to say, was a shock. And although Simpson certainly heard the swift criticism of his plan, voices as wide-ranging as tribes, environmental groups, energy interests, and farmers were quickly to praise his proposal for its collaborative spirit and attempt to find compromising solutions, uh, something not heard much out of Washington nowadays. As soon as the plan was released, Columbia Insight uh, wanted to hear more from the 12-term Republican representative about why the Snake River Dam issue is so important to him and what his plans, uh, what his plans chances for passage into law really are. The Columbia Insight asked, uh, it's been about two weeks, it's been about two weeks since you released your energy and salmon plan, how do you feel about the response? And Simpson said, I have to say, it's, a, it's about what we expected. We knew there would be people who would say, hell no, to start <laughs> with. Other people would be excited about the concept and a lot of others who, who for, for now, are really sitting back and, and want to look through the proposal and think about it. Uh, the, they ask him again, what's surprised you about the reaction? And he responded, what's really been interesting is seeing that the people who are opposed to this uh, proposal tend to focus on only one aspect of the plan, dam removal. That's all they hear, and then they shut down. My staff and I, we've been working on this plan for over three years and have more than 300 different meetings, have had over 300 different meetings about it. So we've heard a, a lot of different points of view, and we've uh, had a lot of discussions and collaborative groups on these issues in the region over the past 25 to 30 years. Every collaborative group over the over that time has come up with nice ideas that everybody can agree on, increasing the numbers of salmon, clean, renewable energy, better efficiency, improving habitats, etc. But when it comes down to breaching the dams themselves, the groups break apart and they just can't go any further. Fundamentally, the people who are opposed to breaching the dams are used to doing things a certain way and just don't want to change what they're doing. Um, yeah, so these are some of the salmon that they have that they're, that they're working on. Uh, saving. Um, th this story is going to be ongoing. As they've been working on it for a while. I know they've had um, a lot of uh, 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 they've had a lot of help. I know that uh, one of the people that's been pushing for the renewal on the uh, Snake Dam and bringing back salmon to North Idaho is Paulette Jordan. You know, she's been really an advocate for the salmon, and I hope that they can come to some agreements and, and move forward because there are just so many uh, stakeholders in it now that stand to benefit. I mean, this article doesn't even mention the, you know, the restoration and the recreational fishing. Mm -hmm. You know, once you get that, the salmon runs coming back, um, that'll open up a, a whole other uh, industry. You know, they're, they're afraid of losing industry and they're afraid of their transportation issues and that kind of thing. But there's a lot of benefits to it aside from... You know, the staple and the, a food source and as indigenous people, you know, that was really our way of life. So, yeah, Jeff, you know, we've been down, uh, you know, supporting the nest purse, free the snake. Uh, we've been down on oh, the paddle. Flotilla. Yeah. The flotilla. Um, and so we've been down there. There's lots of folks that support these efforts. It's not just a tribal issue. And this particular uh, uh, stretch of the river is really the most viable uh, for salmon, the, the ecosystem, and it could add miles and miles to uh, salmon 
uh, habitat, and it really makes the most sense. And a as Mike uh, uh, Simpson mentioned, this is a, a only one part. Um, there's a whole uh, plan that's in place, and it really makes the most sense to utilize that portion of the river. We're losing salmon at great rates. We've reported on this in the past, and the killer whales depend on them. And, uh, yeah, I think we, we should support those efforts. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, it would be neat. I just can't, I can't, I always can't even imagine having salmon back in the Spokane River. You know, it's been over 80 years now, and to see those those June hogs come in the spring would be awesome. I couldn't even imagine dropping a line down in Peaceful Valley and just pulling out, you know, the, the, the yeah. Well, let's get there. We, we can get there. Um, so, so, yeah. Moving along. Okay. So next we want to take a look at uh, March Madness. Of course, we're all uh, sports fanatics for our young people. We see that the Wyoming Indian Lady Chiefs pulled off a three-peat. Uh, Lady Chiefs uh, are your 2021 uh, WHSAA 2A Girl State Champions. Um, yeah, so we're excited uh, to give a shout out to these girls. And you can see them there in their ribbon skirts along with their uh, basketball jerseys. Man, that just touches my heart. Yeah, and thank you so much to the uh, Intertribal Athletic uh uh, Intertribal Athletics uh, Facebook page posted that. That's pretty cool. We'll leave the link to those guys in the comment section below. Uh, moving right along, we have some more March Madness. I know we had a couple that we wanted to look at. Uh, let's go to these guys. This is kind of cool. Lapway. All right. Lapway with <laughs> Kyrie <laughs> Irving providing inspirational. What is it? I inspiration. Uh, Lapway wins 11th Idaho State title. This is um, it's just bringing more eyes to our community. High school sports news. They, they, so I, I could not even believe this when I saw that. I know I lost the story in here somewhere, but I think I was reading it. Was their 11th straight, 11th oh, wow. straight title. Um, gosh. And I think I... I sent you a shout out. Didn't a famous sports person, gosh. um, uh, send, said, uh, good luck to, wasn't it member? I sent you that, that there was a famous sports person who was shouting out to the natives. Nice. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll find it in a second here. All but. right. Well, let's keep things moving along. We have uh, Tenesket with the basket. So these guys from Ronan are doing wonders. This is awesome. Great to see. This team really stuck together and stuck it out. Um, yeah. That's uh, actually my great nephews, Elijah and Marlo Tenasket. Yeah. Uh, bro, doing it out there in Ronan, Ronan Chiefs. And, of course, their whole team is just amazing. Uh, they fought hard um, and uh, end up with third place over there in Montana. Yeah, so good job, guys. And uh, we'll be rooting for you next year for sure. Moving right along, we have a story about our current president, Biden's voting right executive order includes creation of steering group on native american voting rights president biden signs an executive order aimed at equal access to vote for all eligible americans now, this is a washington this is a white house photo this article comes to us out of the native news online uh, from their staff on march 7th uh, washington president joe biden on sunday signed an executive order on promoting access to voting that aims to protect voting rights for all eligible Americans. The president signed the executive order on the 56th anniversary of Bloody Sunday, a day when police beat black marchers as they marched to gain the right to vote. The right to vote is sacred and fundamental, and this is just this is just the beginning of our work to ensure every American can freely exercise that right, Biden said, including or included in the president's executive order is the establishment of an in, interagency steering group on Native American voting rights. In Section 10 of the executive order, the steering group uh, is to engage in meaningful and robust consultation with tribal nations and Native leaders on focus areas and concerns for Native American voting rights and to develop a report on best practices and recommendations after one year. The executive order was applauded by the National Congress of American Indians. Yeah, so, um, uh, of course, our president uh, of NCI is Fawn Sharp, and she said, We applaud and share President Biden's vision for a country where all Americans uh, secure equal access to freely and fully participate in our democracy. One of the first resolutions considered by NCI in, in its very beginning in 1944 was brought uh, by a tribal delegate who said uh, American Indians were being denied the right to vote. 
Uh, and so uh, Sharp, uh, Fawn Sharp has continued uh, to support these efforts. We have been working since that time to protect and promote voting rights for Native people. Uh, we know the importance of making our voices heard, exercising our right to vote, and unfortunately it's simply harder in many cases for tribal citizens to vote than it is for other folks. Uh, you know, there's efforts by some states to restrict access to voting. Uh, President Biden's executive order on promoting access, the Native American Votes uh, Rights Steering uh, Group creates uh, that it creates are, are just essential. There's a myriad of jurisdictional issues, uh, challenges facing rural and reservation communities, denial of, of using with our tribal ID to vote as a form of ID, and there's unique issues that warrant a careful review. And so uh, enacting this modern Native American Voting Rights Act is really important. You know, we work, uh, you know, across Indian country, working hard to secure rights uh, for Natives. Yeah, it's very important. You know, we've seen the importance of it, especially in this last election. It's neat that uh, Fawn stepped up and, and made a statement about it all. Uh, you know, if you've never heard her speak, she's an amazing speaker, speaks with a lot of passion and very, very... Um, solid in her her uh, information and just you know she's solid she's yeah her knowledge yeah. base is amazing yeah yep. so she's an attorney <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah she's an attorney and she also has a, a master's in tax law in llm oh wow i did not know that yeah yeah i heard she went to uh bible camp american indian bible camp yeah <laughs> she was one of my counselors uh we we had well i, I it was over by Hump Tulips and, uh, yeah, over on the coastal. We used to have American Indian Bible Camp. And it's so fun because... Back we, in 19. <laughs> <laughs> a long time ago. And we had fun things at American Indian Bible Camp. We didn't just horse around with uh, a beanbag toss. We had mud wrestling. Uh, we had the spruce goose. Uh, we had, which is a zip lining. <laughs> <laughs> our Indian Bible camps, we, we had it going on the Kalapas and, uh, yeah, all of our family. So it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, pretty cool. I'm glad that we have the representation. You know, speaking of uh, Native American history or women Women's History Month, uh, here's a woman that made history and still making history. Yeah, so, yeah, and we get them ready at Bible camp. We have mud wrestling. <laughs> we prep them for those Santa hearings. They're all primed and ready to go by the time they're getting to law school. <laughs> all right. All right. Speaking of Senate, the Senate hearing. Senate passes $1.9 trillion relief package on Saturday. Bill goes back to the House. This is uh, Native News Online. March 6th, the U.S. Senate passed on Saturday President Joe Biden's $1.9 trillion coronavirus relief package known as the American Rescue Plan Act. After a marathon session, the bill will go back to the U.S. House of Representatives for a final vote next week, once the House passes the legislation, it will be sent to President Biden for his signature to turn it into law. The, the bill provides uh, $1,400 checks to individuals who earn up to $75,000 annually or $150,000 per couple. The final vote was 50 to 49, with all Republicans uh, voting no for the legisla uh, legislation. Senator Dan uh, Sullivan uh, from Alaska was absent. So that passed because there was one absence in there. But the reason we brought this story to you, you know, we hear a lot of things coming out of Washington, but this is very significant. For tribal nations, Democratic senators worked hard to secure more than $31.2 billion in dedicated funding for tribal governments and Native communities, comprising the largest investment in history for Native programs. The new funding will deliver immediate relief for hard-hit Native American families and support tribal nations as they build a bridge towards economic recovery. Native communities need relief. We listened and we took action with more than $31 billion for tribal governments and Native programs. The American Rescue Plan delivers the largest one-time investment to Native communities in history. Senator Brian Schatz, of a Democrat out of Hawaii, chairman of the Senate Committees on, uh, on Indian Affairs and member of the Senate Appropriations Committee, uh, said after Saturday's vote, this historic funding is a down payment on the federal government's trust responsibility to Native communities and will empower American Indians, Alaskan Natives, and Native Hawaiians to tackle COVID-19's impacts on their community. The $31.2 billion investment in Native communities includes $20 billion for tribal governments to combat COVID-19 and stabilize tribal community safety net programs through treasury uh, state 
and local coronavirus relief funds, six plus billion dollars for native health systems, uh, Indian Health Services, uh, 2.34 billion for uh, COVID-19 vaccines, testing, tracing, mitigation, and workforces, two billion for lost third-party medical billing reimbursements, 600 million for uh, health facilities, constructions, and sanitation programs, $500 million for clinical services and purchased uh, referred care, $420 million for uh, mental health and behavioral health, $140 million for improved IT and telehealth access, $84 million for uh, urban Indian health programs, $10 million for uh, potable water delivery systems, uh, Native Hawaiian health care systems, $20 million set aside for Papa Ola Lakohai, and the Native Hawaiian Healthcare System with the Community Health Center's uh, funding at the Health Resources and Services Administration. So that was a very, very lot amount of stuff to say. <laughs> That's why I gave it to you. <laughs> All right. So one thing notable in here I noticed, $140 million for improving uh, health, IT, and telehealth access. So we had talked before about... Uh, the, you know, a lot of the IHS clinics and a lot of the uh, Indian clinics out there running on DOS. <laughs> DOS. <laughs> DOS. Not Windows, but DOS. So if we can get $140 million to upgrade their uh, operating systems, that would be a step into the 21st century. Could you imagine going from DOS to like, what are we on Windows 14 now or something? <laughs> That's crazy. Know. So anyhow, that's cool. A lot of good steps in the right direction. So that was the Senate side. You have some stuff on the House side. Okay. Uh, so House passes sweeping voting rights bill. Uh, Democrats want to use their razor-thin majority not to pass bills to earn voters' trust, but to ensure they don't lose more seats in the next election. So the House Democrats passed the sweeping voting and ethics legislation under unanimous Republican opposition. Advancing, uh, advancing to the Senate, uh, uh, this would be the largest overhaul of the U.S. Uh, election law in at least a generation. House Resolution 1, which touches on virtually every aspect of the electoral process, was approved Wednesday night on a near party line uh, 220 to 210 vote. It would restrict partisan gerrymandering of congressional congressional districts, uh, strike down hurdles to uh, uh, to voting, and bring transparency to a murky campaign uh, finance system that allows wealthy donors to anonymously bankroll uh, political causes. The bill is powerful uh, counterweight uh, to voting rights restrictions advancing in Republican-controlled state houses across the country. In the wake of Donald Trump's repeated false claims of, of stolen 2020 election, yet it faces uncertain fate in, in the Democrat-controlled Senate where there's little chance of passing without uh, changing the procedural rules that currently allow Republicans to block it. The stakes in the outcome are monumental, uh, cutting the foundational idea that one person equals one vote and carrying with it the potential to shape election outcomes for years to come. It also offers a test of uh, how hard President Joe Biden and his party are willing to fight for his priorities as well as those of the voters. This bill would have put a stop to voter suppression uh, that we're seeking to and, and debating right now, said Representative uh, Nakima Williams, a, Congress, uh, a congresswoman who represents Georgia District and uh, deceased voting rights champion John Lewis, held for years. This bill is good trouble. He, and, and he fought for this his whole life. But, you know, um, Jeff, we take a look at these uh, voting issues, and it affects us here locally. Um, you know, back uh, a few years ago, Joe Pocotis, uh ran against Kathy McMorris Rogers because of the gerrymandering. The Calvo tribe was cut in half, and there was a whole, uh, you know, a whole ha a half of the Calvo uh, tribal members could not even vote for their uh, their own tribal member who was running for that uh, position. Yeah. So when we talk about gerrymandering in Washington State, it is such a crazy thing. You know, here we are in North Spokane, just outside this uh, Spokane city limits, and we are in the same district as OMAC, as East OMAC, and Welpinet, and Colville, and Keller, and all these different places out there, and it's just so huge, and it's cut. It's cut right down into this neighborhood, and it's, it's just weird. It's really, really weird, but... 
So, yeah. So we have aunties like Julie Johnson out there fighting for election issues, supporting candidates, but also staying on top of uh, these gerrymandering, ish, gerrymandering issues. You know, uh, there's a committee that helps draw these lines. So right here in Washington State, our own Brian Cladsby of the Swinomish tribe is now on that committee. So they can't, uh, you know, they have to follow the law. The law says that you need to dr draw those districts in line with local uh, local county tribal governments. And so you they can't, uh, by law, are, are not supposed to be uh, drawing uh, lines down jurisdictions like our tribal communities. Yeah. So I get all fired up. I have a student that's working on these, uh, spatially on the geographic information systems, the GIS boundaries, to look at this exact issue. And so we've been doing the research um, at EWU. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, that was a lot. <laughs> So that was a lot on the house stuff. So yeah. we have the story that our buddy Irv has been following, and this is really important stuff. It's uh, it's about the invasive uh, zebra mussels found in aquarium uh, moss in the moss balls. Northwest Wildlife Agency's warned against this. Um, you know, Irv here has been uh, keeping us up to date on what's going on with this. Uh, he says that Washington Fish and Wildlife says zebra mussels imported here and repackaged so Petco might not be the only brand. They, st they still don't seem to know how long this has been going on. And Google shows not only Petco carrying these moss balls, but Etsy, eBay, Walmart, and Amazon are carrying these, these invasive species aquarium moss balls that contain these uh, zebra mussels. And the problem with it is, is that they take away, they attach themselves to the indigenous mussels here, and they uh, rob the nutrients of them, and they take the nutrients out of the water and they attack uh, the indigenous species of this area and they're coming in from I think he said somewhere in Eastern Europe uh, I, I can't remember where he was saying they're coming from but they are packaging it and so what's happening is people are putting these moss balls into their aquariums and then when they change their aquarium water all of this stuff is going into our waterways mm -hmm. here by doing that so if you have any of these moss balls get rid of them but don't flush them down the toilet don't run them down your sink don't put them in the water um you need to get rid of them because they are uh, attacking our water systems and our ecosystems our waterways so yeah that's a, a good story thanks for keeping us oh uh they're harvested from the wild in the ukraine that's where they're coming from okay. and it's all you know to make a buck holy cow and it's can can cost us you know literally millions and billions in the long run if this uh, really gets out of control. So we'll keep an eye on that. So, Jeff, we're almost out of time. Um, in fact, we're a little over. We try to keep it. We, we know your time is valuable and, you know, you're at your office. Um, and so we're just going to go to our, our last story. Um, um, are you indigenous, over 20, and buff? Marvel wants you. So there are two um, indigenous characters, including Katamal and a male... Um, it, uh, Ziana and a female, uh, there's two parts uh, that they're uh, casting for. You know, considering Black Panther 2 starts filming in July, the roles would be set for that film. Uh, so they're casting, they're wanting Native American uh, folks. Uh, so, you know, get ready, submit a video. Um, Marvel's looking for indigenous characters. The, the details have not uh, yet been revealed, but uh, representatives at two Major casting companies have shared uh, some description notes. Uh, Sarah Finn casting uh, responsible for the feature film projects like The Avengers, Endgame, The Mandalorian, and Guardians of the Galaxy. And Carla Houle casting uh, company known for Coco, Narcos, and Selena the series all are looking for two indigenous actors to play Mayan, act, Mayan characters. Uh, professional acting experience isn't required, and although the characters are reportedly Mayan, the actors do not have to speak Spanish, according to the companies. The companies also state, while the characters are Mayan, uh, we welcome submissions of actors from all North American and South American indigenous backgrounds. The casting company's representative is assertive, uh, or asserting the importance of the physical prowess of each character in terms of muscularity and athleticism. So likely. <laughs> they said indigenous and buff. And buff. Hey. Hey, no. <laughs> All right. So check out Marvel. 
Um, they don't have a clear deadline, but create your video um, and get it submitted. You know, these often, uh, these casting calls um, often put you in a pool, and when they have future projects, um, maybe you're not as buff as they're looking for, but um, there'll be other options <laughs> and, and get your get your video in there. Um, the, we, you know, we want indigenous actors. We want to see ourselves on the screen. <laughs> Quit looking offended. Okay, dream killer. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> All right. Uh, I always thought I'd, I'd be, have the name Margot Mankiller, um, but uh, <laughs> Margot Dream, Dream Killer, Killer. <laughs> it's not quite the same ring to it. <laughs> yeah, this, this is not there. Well, yeah. folks, we want to thank you so much for joining us. Please like and subscribe. Uh, if you have any stories or things that are interested to you, send it to us. Um, we're going to be setting up some more interviews. If, if you or uh, somebody you know needs to give us an interview, uh, we've been pulling it up right here on uh, Facebook Live. And so, yeah, we can uh, do Zoom. Yeah, we can do Zoom. We want to hear from you. Yeah, we want to hear from you. Thank you once again for joining us until Wednesday, 8 a.m. All right. Lum Lum uh, Shet Uhoy. <laughs>